I want to begin with the graphs of the vessel functions because I promised to show, show it to you last time. Uh, so uh, I'm back to the Google Colab. And what I want to do is, uh, here's what we learned. That this was the gamma function. Uh, I forgot to say one thing. This integral only converges when x is greater than 1. If x is not greater than 1, this is like uh, you have some, something in the denominator. Uh, it may or may not converge, actually. If it's uh, less than 0, it definitely doesn't converge from 0 to 1. So uh, you don't really have a definition for gamma being less than 0. But uh, what, what does, does happen is that we also proved this formula last time. What was it? Uh, gamma of x is same as x minus 1 times uh, gamma of x minus 1, right? So you can use this to define the values of gamma even if uh, gamma is less than 0. So for example, if I want gamma negative 1 half, I can put 1 half into, I can stick in 1 half into this equation and I have gamma of uh, 1 half equals to negative 1 half times gamma of negative 1 half. Now, does anyone remember what gamma of 1 half was? It was a familiar value that we had. We, we proved it. Huh? Square, square root of pi, yes. So that would immediately tell you that gamma of uh, negative 1 half would equal to negative 2 square root of pi. Something like that, right? Now, uh, but you also see that there's a problem here because uh, if you want gamma of negative 1, then you would be, no, uh, yeah, there's something wrong with the integers. If you plug in 1 to both sides, then you have 0 times something. So uh, if you try to define gamma of 0, you, you would you have a singularity. If you di divide both sides by this, you have gamma of x divided by x minus 1. And if you have x equals to 1, that has a singularity. And in fact, the gamma functions, I want to show you the graph later, but uh, the, the graph will have some uh, singularities or, or vertical asymptotes at integers, at, at negative integers. Okay. All right, so let me go back to Google Colab. Let's uh, import everything from uh, from iLab. Import everything, and we will also import from SciPy. That's special. Import gamma. We, we, have, we need the gamma function. So I want to show you the gamma function first. So x equals to lin space. Let's say I want to plot it from, let's say, negative 3 to positive 3. Let's divide this into 1,001 1 equal parts. And we are going to plot this uh, from uh, plot gamma of x. Uh, it doesn't look very good uh, yeah, because uh, the values become really large, right? So I, I think what we should be doing is uh, let me uh, limit the axis. So axis, I want the axis to be from negative 3 to 3, but the y-axis I want it to be from negative 6 to positive 6. That then, yeah, that's more like it. So uh, this this is a zero, okay. And then if I draw more of the right side, it's going to go go up like that, it goes goes up there. But at every integers, uh, uh, at negative one, at zero, at zero it has a vertical asymptote. At negative one it has a vertical asymptote. At negative two it has a vertical asymptote, and and so on and so on. So that's what happens with this gamma function. 
All right, uh, let me see. Okay, so once uh, we have some idea of how gamma function looks like, let's now draw the graph of the uh, Bessel function. This is the Bessel function of the first kind. Let's only draw a Bessel function of the first kind. Uh, we can also draw the Bessel function of the second kind. Uh, yeah, but let's just do this one. All right, uh, the thing is, Python doesn't have factorials, but because uh, we know that gamma of, we have this gamma of k plus 1 equals to k factorial. This is something that we proved last time, right? So I'm going to replace this by gamma of k plus 1, and I'll need to make a function for this one. So let's write a Bessel function. Define j of nx where n is the order, this, this alpha here, it, it, I'm, I'm calling it as n because we're only going to plot it for integer n's. So let's go back. Uh, so let me prepare y as 0. So y is x times 0. And for this, you know, this summation, this summation in Python code, it's exactly like the for loop. Uh, you're just adding up all these things where k goes from 0 to some some number. We can't go to infinity because then the program wouldn't stop. So let's just go for the first 100 terms. So for k in range 100 terms, I'm going to add to y all these terms, which were first uh, negative 1 to the kth power. So that, that was on the top, right? And then uh, we had to divide that by Gamma, uh, gamma of k plus 1 times gamma of, was it n plus k plus? It's k plus alpha plus 1, so it's uh, k plus n plus 1. Okay, so that was the coefficient. And to this coefficient, we have to multiply by x divided by 2 to the power of, I forget, it was uh, 2k plus n, right? So it's 2 times k plus n. So we get, we have all these values, we add, it to, add them to y, and then we're going to return the value of y as the output for the Bessel function. So we have the Bessel function ready. And let's try to plot this uh, also. Uh, we are going to only plot it in the 0 to some positive 6. The reason for that is because uh, when we use this to solve for uh, the wave equation on the disk, our values of the r only starts from 0, right? So we're not really interested in what happens in the negative side. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we're going to say now x is uh, a linear space from 0 to 6. And let's divide this into, say, 501 equal parts. Uh, I'll set the axis to be x is from 0 to 6. y, we just need from negative 1 to 1. We might increase this later. OK, and then let's plot x against the, the j zeroth order. So Bessel function of zeroth order is plotted. And I want to plot x comma zero so that the x-axis can be shown. Oh. Didn't work. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Alright, so that's the zeroth order. If I plot the uh, first order along with it, so x comma j of 1x, then uh, see the blue one is j0x, and this orange one is j1x. Okay. Let's also draw uh, j2 comma x. And you can see that 
Now the green one is added. The green one is the uh, J2x. And as I said, local near zero, it, it acts like y equals to x squared or something times y equals to x squared. It's like a parabola near zero because it starts with x squared term. And then if you, if you add just one more, let's just use one more. J3x. Then uh, this red one is J3x, and it, it stays here for a longer time, right? Okay, and uh, I want you to kind of pay attention to the zeros of these uh, Bessel functions. So the blue one is J0. What's the first zero? Can you tell me the value? It's right here, right? It's about slightly less than 2.5, right? So this is 2.4, and the next one here, this blue one here, that's 5.5. Uh, it's left after 5, right? It's 5.5. Now the orange one, uh, we'll call this the zeroth zero, okay? We're, we're not, we're not going to count the, the zero at the origin. That doesn't, that really doesn't work. Uh, that's not really needed for us. So for the orange one is J1, the first root happens close to 4 but slightly under and this value is about 3.8 and then this green one is J2, J2 has its first 0 at 5.13 okay. so uh, the first zeros of these things if you read off this is uh, 2.4 and then 3.8 5.13 and then the next one is 5.5. Okay. Those will later uh, give you these spectrums of the, uh, the or, or the harmonics of the, the disk uh, if you solve the wave equation. I'll explain what that means. Alright, so uh, those are the pictures I wanted to show you. Uh, but let me add to this just one more thing. Uh, a few lectures before, we had the heat kernel, right? We solved the heat kernel on the real line. And uh, uh, I showed that if your initial condition is some function f of x, then uh, the, the solution for, for uh, uxt is uh, this heat kernel convolution with the initial condition. And uh, if this f of x itself is a delta function, then it just picks up this, this value only. So the convolution with the delta function is like the identity. Um, so that's a special case where the initial condition is 0 everywhere, but it's infinity at 0, so that So think about this, if you have a real line and the initial condition is like zero everywhere, but at zero you have like infinity, then zero. And it, 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 by delta, it, it's a initial condition is like a delta function. It's called a delta function, which means that although it has non-zero value only at one point, the integral under this thing is one and uh, gradually if you let the heat go heat evolve according to the heat equation this spreads out to give you these uh, bell curve shape thingy right so I want to show you that by uh, plotting this thing uh, for some k oh I forgot to put the k here so if, if you have k here the, that k is in here just for simplicity, let's just set k as 1, so let's just draw, the, uh, draw this picture for uh, k equals to 1, so let's do that. Let's uh, define the function first, so uh, define k xt, what was it, uh, y uh, equals to, it was exponential of negative x times x divided by 4 times t 
and then you have to divide it by square root of 4 times t k times t. Then we will be returned y. No. Oh, sorry, I should have put 4 times t. They don't like 4t. Okay. All right, so we have that, and now let's plot this. Uh, plot. Oh, I should put now x as. I'll put x as uh, lin space from negative 3 to 3 and 101 points. I'll put axis as negative 3 to 3, and then uh, 0 to 5, something like that. And then we'll plot x comma k, x. Now, uh, at 0, it's not defined, so it's not going to uh, give you a value. But let's say at 0 0.1 second, let's see what, what happens. So at 0 0.1 second, oh, even that's... Uh, Pre evolved. Yeah, I think k equals to one uh, is a heat diffusion that's pretty fast. So, so let's let's put let's say k is like uh, zero point uh, zero point one. Okay. So I like that better. Okay. So in that case, what is the picture? So it's like this. Okay. So. At 0 0.1 seconds, it's already spread out a bit more, right? So if I put like 0 0.01, it, it's very narrow, right? So at 0, it, that's what the delta function is. And it starts spreading out. And uh, here is 0 0.1. And let's also compare the other ones. Comma. Let's uh, see what happens at 0.2 seconds. If you compare those two, you see that now it's spread out, right? And uh, if I plot further with 0.3. spreading out further. So uh, what if I put something like you know, 1, 1 1.0, and uh, it's going to be spread out. So eventually at time t infinity it's going to converge down to 0. So that's, that's the solution. And one thing I uh, said before was that uh, even if the initial condition had zero everywhere else other than the zero. The moment it evolves, uh, you have non-zero values even at very far into infinity. So that's the uh, non-physical characteristic of this heat equation because in physics, nothing can be travel faster than light. But here, it, it's uh, somehow heat equation allows information to travel faster than light.